Okay, back to where we left off yesterday with the Dinam Apikur Chaylem and all those types of things. Now, what happens if a person has two opportunities in front of him? He could do Pikur Chaylem or he could do Nicham Avelem. Yes, choice to do both. So, if he's able to do both, which one does he do first? He does Bikur Chaylem first. Visiting the sick first. Now he's going to do both. But which one should he do first? Alive. What? Well, both are Gemilas Chesed. One was with the living. So the answer is in Shkhanach it says you do the Bikr Chaylam first. Why? Visiting the sick first. Because then you could have him for the person to be healthy. The other person passed away already. Nicham Avelim is not so much for the person who passed away. It's more for the family that remains. But what happens if he cannot do both? It's one or the other. Either Bikachelem and Nicham Avelem. So Allah says he does Nicham Avelem first. I mean, he can't do both. He does Nicham Avelem. Why? Bikachelem is a favor for the living. Nicham Avelem is a favor for the deceased and the family remaining alive. So if you could do both, Bikul Chaylem, you're going to do both. So Bikul Chaylem comes first, because then you're also davening for the person to be healthy. But if you're only going to be able to do one, Nicham Avelem has a double header to it, because it's for the living and for the people that die, and therefore you'll, you'll uh, do that. Now generally speaking, I mean, there's are things that are realities of life, so to speak. A person before they pass away should do vidui, confess, like we do on Yom Kippur. In fact, it's very interesting, Din. You know, Erev Yom Kippur Mincha, we do Vidui. Erev Yom Kippur, we do the whole long Alchetz. So Zen Shkunach, why do we do Alchetz, Erev Yom Kippur Mincha? It's not Yom Kippur yet. So the reason it says in Alter Rebbe Shkunach is, because, listen to this, you might choke on a bone in the Suda Mavsekes, and you won't... <laughs> You might die, and you won't be able to do vidui then, obviously. So therefore, before Yom Kippur starts, just to play it safe, at Mincha, at Yom Kippur, you say vidui. Therefore, there it says in Allah, if you, if you have time before Yom Kippur starts, you do vidui privately, before, you know, before Kol Nidre. So you see that the vidui is a very important thing. So if a person is able to say vidui themselves, they should say it. If not, somebody could say it with them, or they could say it for them. You know, so let's say a person's unconscious or whatever, so, or even, God forbid, comatose. So then you could say it for them. And the best thing would be in their presence. You say there's a whole, it's not al by the way, it's a whole bunch of things that the Svarim that deal with these types of things bring down a whole bunch of, say, Adin Elam, and you say Hashem, like Matur Yom Kippur a little bit plus. There's a bunch of things that you say a person should uh, do vidri. Another thing, what? If a person like uh, lives another day, another day, does he say each day that? Uh, not if, not if he really did bad averis the next few days. Keeps <laughs> on saying vidu every day. No, but it's, 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 before he passes away, you say vidu. You don't have to keep saying it. What's the then purpose? You say for them after they pass away. After they passed away, it's too late already. I'm saying then he lives. He By the way, it's day? interesting. In Svarim, it's brought down that writing a will. <clears throat> is a school to live long, and buying a cemetery plot is also a school to live long. This is brought down in Svarim. Buying a, a cemetery plot and uh, what, making a will is a school It's good luck to, to live long. So they say some people are so unmuzzled they can business. Certain people, you know, never have just have no mazel in business. So they, they are told they should go into the mortuary business. Because with their mazel, nobody would die. <laughs> so they should, go, they should go into the mortuary business because... They have competition. Okay, yeah. Okay, anyway. So another... What? How do you tell a person... What do you tell them if they're passing away? How do you tell them to do video? You don't time. have to say to them, you're dying and you do vidui. You right. say, listen, the person when they're very sick, it's appropriate to say vidui, to confess their sins. You tell a person you're kippur to do vidui. It's not that they're dying. You know, it's the end of, the person knows it's the end of their life. 
And it's the end of their life. Uh, the people say, uh, you know, you say you, that you can make it in a very powerful way. It doesn't have to be. I was cases that people called me that I should come and say vidu with them. And it's not the, you know, they know that there's, whether well, it's today or next week or next month, whatever, but uh, people should say vidu. Also, it says in Allah, it's a Gemara, but Shukhnar brings it down. We find by Yaakov Avinu, because he made Yosef different than the brothers, there was a lot of jealousy and a lot of uh, things happened. So it says in Allah, okay, in, in the laws of inheritance, talking about biblical law, laws of inheritance like this. If they're sons and daughters, only the sons inherit, not the daughters. If there's a firstborn son, he gets double of what all the other kids get, which means if there's, let's say, five boys, you divide the property into six, the b'choy gets two six, and everybody else gets a six, and that's the way the biblical division is. Now, they don't think it's just like that. The girls who don't inherit are su supported from the estate until they die. I'm, I'm sorry, until they get married. Until they get married, the boy, in fact, if there's not enough money, for the boys to inherit, the boys have to go beg, and the girls get uh, supported from the estate. That's the biblical law. But what people do nowadays, because they have a bunch of kids, boys and girls, and they want uh, not that the first, you know, not the boys should get, not the girls. You know, there'd be a lot of uh, what's called family feuds. So there's a way of doing it, Allah, I'll tell you the general uh, uh, guideline for it, the way it could be done, but you need a, uh, there, there are firm lawyers that do this, by the way. And the way you do it is like this. A person, technically, until he dies, controls his money. He can do with it whatever he wants. Once, God forbid, the person passes away, so then there's a din of Yerusha, then there's a din of inheritance. So the way it's worked out in the general, generally speaking, you make like this. You don't want to just take away the law of inheritance. It's a biblical mitzvah of inheritance. So what you do, I'm, I'm just throwing out numbers. So let's say there's uh, two boys, two girls, okay, whatever. So you leave over $100 for Yerusha. Okay, people leave $1,800, whatever it is. You leave over X amount of money as inheritance. That inheritance is divided in the way the Torah says. The boys get, the girls don't. Uh, the first one would get double of the boys. Okay, but it's not a lot of money, so it's not uh, something they're going to... And he explained to them, this is the law and the tater, so this is what we want to do. The rest of the money, what you could do, halachically, is you can make a gift that's effective one hour before you die. Well, halachically, even one minute before you die. It's your business. Lawyer's business. So what you do is... You say like this, let's say the guy has $100,000 and he has a bunch of boys and girls. So before he dies, he leaves over, let's say, $100. That's all for the Yerusha part. And the rest of it, what he actually does is he gives a gift to boys and the girls equally uh, right before he passes away. If he likes the girls better, then he can give the whole thing to them. He could do whatever he wants. Right. But it, we'll soon see that halacha says you shouldn't do whatever you want. You should give all the kids equally. You shouldn't take away an inheritance from one kid to another kid. And by, even if one of the kids is not behaving properly, halacha says you still should give him because he might have children that will be good tzaddikim. You don't know what. So just out of curiosity, what if you have five children? and Chas one of them predeceases you. Do their heirs take the portion that would have gone to their father? You're talking about the gift or the? The gift. Halacha no, you're talking gift. about. The other one is gift. I'm no, no, okay. halacha is like this. No. If, in fact, according to halacha, if there's sons and daughters, yeah? Yeah. It's a mission in Yesh, in Baba Bafsa, the eighth parak. Yesh and Eichlin. That's where the guy has uh, a son and a daughter. Yeah? But the son died before the father did, but he had a daughter. Now, according to the laws of inheritance, if, if somebody dies and there's only girls, they inherit. 
It's just if there's boys, biblically, they don't inherit. But if there's no boys, the girls inherit. So what happens if Avraham Avinu had a boy and a girl? The boy had a girl. Okay, it doesn't matter what the girl had. And the boy died before Avraham Avinu did. Now Avraham Avinu dies. So the son was the one that inherited the money, so his daughter is going to get the money, not the, not the aunt. Because it's going to generation. The, the inheritance goes the inheritance goes through the boys. So the boy gets it. Now he's not here, so his kid is, his daughter is in the place of the, of the father. But even with the gifts, it's the same thing. You know, if they have kids, and this is what the gift you gave them. So they gave it as a gift, now they die, so the kids, those kids will, will get the gift. So this is the way uh, a lot of religious people try to set it up in a way that they don't want, uh, you know, uh, different kids getting, getting different things. And it's both, sorry, Chassotelila's situation, both of the kids, both of the daughter and the son passed, does it matter what their kids were? If the daughter has a son and the son had a daughter. Again, in biblical law? Yeah, in biblical law. In biblical law, if there was a son and a daughter. Law. One second. <laughs> there was Avram Avinu. He had two sons. A son and a daughter. Right. They had kids. Yeah. Okay? Now, son one and daughter one died before Avram Avinu did. Right. right? Then Avram Avinu dies. So the sons offspring are going to get everything and the daughter the daughter might have a son right. and the son might have a daughter right. but because the son gets the inheritance it's his now his inheritor meaning the daughter because there's no sons that she's going to get the inheritance that's exactly what the story with Salafchad was the girls came and said Avanu died so what's going to happen we, 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 they didn't know then the inheritance if there's no sons that you get, uh, you get the, do the daughters get. So they said, well, we don't, we're not going to have inheritance in the land. They wanted to go into Eretz and get part of Eretz throat. So Meshav Rebbeinu said to them, no, if there's no son, no, he, he asked Hashem, Shem told him, if there's no son, then the daughters get. There's a whole process. The, in, in Jewish law, one second, in Jewish law, there's only one scenario of a Jew that doesn't have a relative that can inherit him. And that is, there's only one scenario possible that a Jew doesn't have a relative that would be able to inherit him. And that is, if somebody converted, they were a non-Jew, they converted to Yiddishkeit, they never married, and they never had children. So now when they die, there's no Yerusha there. There's no people inheriting him. So then his property is what's called Hefker, it's free for all. First come, first serve. But any other Jew, if there's a father, a brother, an uncle, he goes all the way up and down in all the line, the chain of, of uh, descendants, there isn't anybody in the Jew in the world that won't have a relative. Somehow, somewhere, it could be 20th cousin, 14 times removed, but still in the line of, of Yerusha, of inheritance, they're going to get it anyway. The only case is, the Gemara says, a ger shemes banim. A ger died and he doesn't have any kids, so he has no, no brothers, no sisters. He has no. Uh... By the way, it's interesting law. According to Torah law, a ger, I mean a guy, inherits his father. There is a din of Yerusha by goyim also, huh? biblically. There's a din. What do you want? What's with the wife? Where does she play? Biblical law, talking biblical law, the wife doesn't inherit her husband. Does not. No. A wife doesn't inherit her husband. I'll be in. But again, but nevertheless, Torah says she has to be fed from the estate and clothed from the estate until she dies or gets married. When the new husband has a responsibility of feeding her. But biblically, wife does not inherit the husband. What? Practically. practically, what's usually done in the world today, let's say the father passes away, so I, mean, I can't tell you what all Jews do, 
But the proper thing for the, for the Jewish child to do is that the mother stays in the house and the state belongs to her and she spends the money. And then after 120 years, when she goes, then it's when the kids divide everything up. I told you, that's what I would just explained, what I just said. Yeah. It wasn't his, it, came, it was way before him. Now in Eretz Yisrael, they do something else. In Eretz Yisrael, when a parent passes away, Bezdin in Eretz Yisrael, everything the Rabbanut over there, they make you sign a paper, you give up the rights of Yerusha, and then it goes equally. In a certain way, they can't just undo Yerusha, but they make it in a way, like similar to what we said. No. The rabbi emphasized to the boy that you are essentially inheriting everything. That's biblical law. Yeah. We said that, but that's and not what the that's them. not the practical law of it. Similar to the concept of selling chametz or selling a business for Shabbos or whatever it is, this is the way Jews get around when it comes to money. This is the way Jews get around everything. And for Shabbos and Bias. No, it's illegal. If your parent wants it, all the kids should be, be get the same. What? What just said sounds very profound to me, very dramatic. It's the first time that I hear a compromise. It's the first time you heard anything profound from my mouth. I appreciate it.